Hello and welcome to my April reading wrap up. I'm slightly distracted by Shinji just here. I can't really show you because uh, he's a bit camera shy <laughs> but if I get an opportunity to show you during the video then I will. Starting off with my stats as always I'm not very happy with these this month to be honest but you know I read 13 books which is really good. I'm just a bit annoyed at myself that only two of those were by BIPOC authors but you will see from my May TBR that I am going to be fixing that in the month of May. I read as I said 13 books which amounted to 5,215 pages in total and I hauled 35 books which is ridiculous so <laughs> Yeah, hence my dissatisfaction with my reading stats for this month in particular. But getting into the books that I did read, there are three that I'm not going to talk about in this video because they will be in a secret TBR reading challenge type vlog which I hope will be coming to you in the month of May. So I'm only going to be wrapping up ten of the books that I read this month in this particular video and the first one of those was the Shardathon group book for this round of Shardathon which took place in April and that was Perfect State by Brandon Sanderson which is a short story, very short story. I, I read the ebook copy on my phone so I don't actually know how many pages it is but it's not, it's not very long at all and it's kind of like a it's a sci-fi alternate universe type. I kind of think the Matrix, but like people live in their own worlds that are perfect for them. And it was just, it was a fun, easy read. I enjoyed myself and it was just nice and quick. So if that's, if you like sci-fi and you're looking for something just really quick and easy with a fun kind of world setup, then I would recommend it. From there, I read Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. I'm not gonna hold it up because Shinji will get annoyed that I'm not giving him fuss. Although he's now mightily intrigued by the shelf that I just took it off. What are you doing? What are you doing? You want to say hello to the people? Hello people. Hello people. <laughs> so, Concrete Rose, if you don't know, is the latest book by Angie Thomas and it actually follows Maverick Carter who is the father of Star who is the protagonist from The Hate You Give and I did actually talk about Concrete Rose in a vlog so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on it but I did really thoroughly enjoy it. Maverick was a character that I really liked from The Hate You Give and I was really interested to see his backstory and there were things about his backstory that I should have already known because they were confirmed in The Hate You Give but I had forgotten them and so there were a few shocking moments <laughs> for me that Actually, I really enjoyed experiencing it that way. I said in my vlog that I still think, or would still recommend, reading The Hate You Give first, only because Concrete Rose is slightly cliffhangery, I guess, but only because kind of any questions that you have left are answered in The Hate You Give. So I suppose if you were gonna read them back to back, that would be fine to start with Concrete Rose. But I don't know, I feel like you'd get more out of it reading them in publication order. And then next I read Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. This is the third and final for now book in the Cassidy Blake series by Victoria Schwab. Cassidy Blake is someone who can see ghosts and her best friend is ghost and her parents are ghost hunters 
but not very good ones and they don't know that she can see ghosts but they are filming a ghost hunting documentary and she is traveling around with them this is a really fun end to the trilogy victoria schwab has said that she might write more in this particular universe again in the future so it's not necessarily the very last book but it is for now and i enjoyed it i still think that city of ghosts which is book one is my favorite in the trilogy but i did really enjoy this kind of wrap up and i like the way that because these books are quite episodic in nature they can have a pretty conclusive ending whilst leaving themselves open to more books in the series which i really enjoyed then i read a quick graphic novel this one is aquacorn cove by katie o'neill and i really love katie o'neill's drawing style illustration style i don't know i just really enjoyed it and it is basically about saving the ocean saving the coral reef specifically so it's quite an environmental are you done shinji i think shinji's done uh, it's quite an environmental story which was quite nice i enjoyed it but really i just read these books because i just love the art style so that was a really fun enjoyable and quick read which was nice okay he's back <laughs> the next book i read was the kiss quotient by helen huang which was the thoughtful book club book for the month of april and this one follows stella who is autistic and has asperger's syndrome and her parents particularly her mum are putting quite a lot of pressure on her to get married and have babies and Stella's just really awkward she doesn't know how to be in a relationship she has never can you not wreck my journal thank you um and she's never had any good sexual experiences so she hires a male escort to teach her how to be in a relationship and it's honestly just really fun i quite enjoyed it there is the miscommunication trope but it didn't it really didn't annoy me that much to be honest and i feel like and th this was mentioned by i think it was candace and julie both said in the discord that they didn't feel like the miscommunication was unrealistic because of Stella's Asperger's syndrome and because of Michael the male lead's shame about certain aspects of his life which I won't go into for spoilery reasons I mean I didn't I you know I wasn't wowed by this book but I did enjoy it I thought it was fun it had some smutty scenes which was nice and it was just a light read which I quite enjoyed so it was a hit for me then I read The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan and I have a full spoilery reading vlog for this one so so if you are interested in that then I will link it for you but if you don't want a spoilery vlog this is the second book in the Wheel of Time series I won't tell you what this one is about but book one is very much a chosen one trope three boys from a remote village get wrapped up in an adventure and it's kind of a traveling story this one is as well i enjoyed this one the middle portion of the book was quite slow which is the same as how i felt about book one but i enjoyed the ending and i am starting to feel like I can see where the different plot threads are going. I couldn't really do that after book one. I was kind of like, where is this going to go? Whereas now it's starting to be a little bit more clear, which I like. I will be reading probably The Dragon Reborn in May, even though it wasn't on my May TBR. The audiobook has come in for me at my library, so I will probably end up reading it, even though my TBR is already ridiculous what's new then i read if we were villains by m l rio which is a dark academia story that starts off with oliver 
coming out of prison for murder and he is telling the detective what really happened and I mean that that that's the synopsis I had heard before going into this one and it's kind of the synopsis that's on the back but I actually think it's a little bit misleading because that makes you think that this is a murder mystery thriller type story and it's really not. There, I don't think there was any point in this where it wasn't obvious to me one who was going to die and two who did it and a bunch of other stuff that is supposed to be kind of semi-mysterious I guess but really isn't. This is actually more of a love story to Shakespeare I guess. There's they attend, Oliver and his friends attend an arts school and they're in the theatre programme, um, college this is, so they're, they're adults, and the the this particular art school theatre programme they only do Shakespeare so the cast of characters here put on a number of plays throughout the course of this story and they also talk to each other using Shakespearean quotes quite a lot of the time so there's a lot of Shakespeare in here I think you'd probably I, I'm not opposed to Shakespeare I haven't read a lot of Shakespeare I probably want to at some point but I just haven't yet. I've read I read Romeo and Juliet in school for sure and I think I've read at least part of A Midsummer Night's Dream but beyond that I haven't read any Shakespeare at this point and I mean I was still able to follow it like you can read it without having read Shakespeare but I feel like this would mean more to you if you had read some Shakespeare and then of course it has all the hallmark problems that come along with dark academia books you know rich white kids complaining about how sad their lives are because their parents are uninterested or don't support them or you know whatever and they get away with murder basically so yeah it was it was fine but it really wasn't what I was expecting and I kind of wish it had been the murder mystery thriller that I had expected. Then I reread The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson which you know I loved it this is my favourite book in the trilogy thoroughly enjoyed it part four is my favourite I'm not going to talk about this here because we are the Cosmere Unbounded crew. <laughs> That's Shinji playing with a ball. The Cosmere Unbounded crew are going to be doing a full live show talking about this one. So I'm not going to talk about it here other than to say again, loved it. Just what I needed after reading If We Were Villains that really disappointed me. The next book I read was also a disappointment, unfortunately, and that was Solaris by Stanislav Lem, which is a classic sci-fi. I mean, I think it's categorised as classic sci-fi, but it was published in the 60s, so it's not kind of super old or anything. And this follows Kelvin, who is a psychologist, and he goes to this planet, Solaris, and it's kind of it's a research mission because there are things about this planet that nobody really understands and they're trying to understand these things and when he gets there the rest of the crew on Solaris are having hallucinations and then Kelvin starts having hallucinations of his dead wife. Why didn't I like this book? Well, there are a number of reasons actually. I hate being negative about books on my channel but I have to be honest with you all, this one really was not it for me. So quite early on I was listening to the audiobook of this and thank goodness for that because otherwise I wouldn't have made it through. I nearly DNF'd this multiple times. I was planning on listening and following along but actually this is a translated work and my audiobook version was translated by a different translator to the translator of this print version 
and it was completely different. So that was an interesting thing, like completely different. The, the, the gist was the same, but the words, completely different. So I couldn't, I couldn't follow along. It was fine, I just did some colouring instead. So why didn't I like this book? Quite early on, there is an entirely unnecessary racist scene where a black woman is described firstly as a negress, which is unnecessary. I mean, I get that this was written in the 60s, but still. And what's even worse than that is the, the visuals that are used to describe this woman, uh, grotesque, terrifying. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. I very nearly DNF'd it at that point and I did pause it and look up whether or not that racist content was going to continue because if it had, I would have DNF'd it. I'm not about that. Luckily it was just that one scene. That's not excusable at all, but that was not okay. So that was, that was already strike one and because it was so early in the book, it set me up already to distrust this author at best. And then the author just, on multiple occasions, for pages and pages at a time, I'm not talking like two or three pages here, I'm talking like 15 pages here, would just self-indulgently world build and just throw all of this sciencey stuff at you under the guise of world building but none of it was actually relevant to the story. So it really just came off as self-indulgent, as I already said, and just like the author showing off, like, oh, look at all this fancy science stuff that I've made up for this world. But none of it was relevant to the plot of this story. It was really just in there for the sake of it. And this is a short book already anyway. So I feel like this author didn't really know what they were doing with the plot of this story, particularly because I went into this thinking, well, the point of this book is to figure out why these hallucinations are happening. What are they? Where are they coming from? What's happening? We never get an answer to that. It's just kind of like, I mean, I guess this is kind of a spoiler, so I will put spoilers on the screen, but I feel like you should know, if you're going into this expecting a mystery for which you're going to get the answer, you're not going to get the answer. It's kind of just accepted that this is a thing that has happened. Okay. Fine. I... yeah. If this book were not so short, I would not have finished it but I stubbornly pushed myself through to the end, hoping that the book would redeem itself, and it just didn't. I already returned the audiobook, because I'd got the audiobook through Audible. I've returned it. I may well unhaul this copy, even though it's a shame, because it is actually a really nice, a really nice book, but not the one. Not, no, I wasn't. I wasn't a fan of that. And then, sadly, that was followed up with another book that I wasn't overly enamoured by. This one I had been reading for a while. I had soft DNF'd it for a week or two and then went back and finished it and that was The Crooked Mask by Rachel Burge. I read the first book in this duology, trilogy, series. I'm not really sure. Mm, I think the year before last, maybe? It was a while ago anyway, and I liked it. Would I like it now if I reread it? I'm not sure. I feel like I'm a much more experienced reader since I read The Twisted Tree, and maybe that's why this one didn't work for me. I didn't feel particularly connected to the characters. I didn't feel particularly interested in the mystery that was happening. There were some spooky scenes, but they didn't really creep me out the way that the first book did. Again, more experienced reader at this point, so that's probably the reason for that. I have realised I haven't told you what this is about. This is 
sorry about that that was my shopping so i realized that i haven't told you what this is about i'm not going to tell you what this book is about because it's a sequel book one is about martha who has fallen from a tree and she has gone blind in one eye or she's lost one eye actually and at the same time she has developed this power where if she touches people's clothes she can understand things about them know their past that kind of thing and so she goes to visit her grandmother in Norway to try and figure out what's happening to her and when she arrives her grandmother has died and there is a strange boy living in her grandmother's house and it's a Norse mythology story so there's a focus on Odin and Yggdrasil and that kind of thing and this book continues that story and I don't know I feel like I've outgrown this one it's definitely on the younger end of YA slash upper end of middle grade which I don't generally mind but this one just didn't work for me as I said I just I didn't really feel connected to the characters I wasn't particularly interested in the mystery that was happening the setting was kind of fun it's kind of set at a circus carnival type thing but yeah I just I wasn't really invested basically so that one was sadly a miss for me as well and then the final book that I read in, a, in April which I actually read yesterday which was the last day of April was The Assassination of Brangwen Spurge which is one of the books that I purchased in April as well in this video just here and I really enjoyed this this I listened to the audiobook as well because it was available at my library this one is full of illustrations as well but the illustrations actually tell the story as well so kind of you know the narrative will stop at certain points and it will be the illustrations that tell the next portion of the story and then you'll go back to narrative and it follows Brangwen Spurge who is an elf and he is sent as a spy undercover as a, a guest an envoy I suppose from the elven kingdoms to the goblin lands under the guise of delivering a gift to the king of the goblins so that there can be some peace between between these two historically warring nations and we also follow what's his name Werfel who is the goblin host for Brangwen while he is there and I won't say any more about the plot but what I will say is really that this is a children's book so just proving my point that I do like reading books for kids at uh, middle grade I'd say that this is probably middle grade in fact it says on the back that it is targeted at 10 to 14 year olds I mean I'd, I'd put it at the lower end of that personally but you know whatever and what it's really about is inherent bias actually is is what it's about it's about the perceptions that Brangwen has about goblins and the perceptions that Werfel has about elves and how that impacts upon their experience with each other and you know getting to know each other and I thoroughly enjoyed this it was a super fun easy read the audiobook was five hours long I listened at two times speed and in fact this was a little bit on the slower side probably because it's for a younger audience so I actually listened to this at 2.25 speed just so that it was kind of at my reading speed and so it only took kind of two and a quarter hours I guess to read this and it was just fun it was thoroughly enjoyable I would recommend having either a physical or ebook copy if you're going to read it because of the fact that the images do tell part of the story like you can you absolutely can read it without the images 100 percent. so if you if you have a visual impairment or something you can still enjoy this story but 
if you are able to read a version with the images then I would recommend doing that and I feel like this was a really good book to redeem the month because the last two books that I read were not were not it for me so that is it those are all minus three of the books that I read minus three minus two yeah sorry I can't count that was all of the books I read minus two in April on the whole it was a pretty successful reading month I enjoyed the majority of what I read the end of the month was a little bit touch and go but we finished off strong I largely enjoyed all of the things I read this month and I'm actually really excited for all of the books that I'm going to be reading in the month of May. Let me know if you read anything that you particularly enjoyed this month. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, particularly if you've read Solaris or The Crooked Mask and you enjoyed them. Please let people know that in the comments because just because I didn't like them doesn't mean that you wouldn't like them and if you liked them you can share that enjoyment with other people so they can maybe find something that works for them. I feel like if you do like a lot of science in your science fiction then you might enjoy this but sh sh share your thoughts basically in the comments and don't forget to check out Ponderful Books and that's it for this one. Thank you so so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me then do think about hitting that subscribe button and I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks! Bye!